the scene on the U.S. housing market is um, very similar to what's happening in Jamaica, but I believe Jamaica is more in the early days. So let's talk about the U.S. first. Mortgage rates on average in the U.S. have gone up, just like you see in Jamaica. In the U.S., mortgage rates are now 8%, which is very high because if we think about it, coming from 2008 until now, we've been in what you call a low interest rate environment where it was very, very cheap to borrow money. So coming out of the pandemic, interest rates started going up very, very quickly from last year, even into this year a bit. And because of that, we're seeing now mortgage rates being higher. The effect of that on US housing prices is that it's become way more unaffordable for a lot of persons, especially first time home buyers, they can't really afford a house. And so they, there's this new thing coming up that you know a generation maybe end up being lost because you're gonna have so many people who are now just entering the workforce, ready to start a family and they can't afford to buy a house because it's just so expensive. So the situation we're seeing in the US is unique because what's happening now, the home builders, which we call developers that are building the houses, they're saying, hey, we're building all these houses, affordability is becoming an issue. So it's impacting sales. Not as many transactions are going on. So the home builders step in and say, you know what? We are gonna do our do our part to increase affordability. And so they've been helping the home buyers by providing what we call somewhat like a discount. They're providing a, a rebate to the home buyers to make the housing prices a little bit more affordable. People, and you see in the comments, people talking about crash and all that could be happening. The, the impact from the home buyers isn't gonna be that aggressive to cause a crash in and of itself. But what we're definitely seeing is that the transactions are slowing down. A lot of open houses are there and people are just coming just to see. So demand is there, but there are no transactions. The ripple on effect can be that, you know, could something like this be coming to Jamaica? Because in Jamaica, we're having the same thing. Very high interest rates on mortgages. We're seeing some banks at 9%, 10% for mortgage rates now. I mean, I look this morning and I see 9.75, 10 points something for mortgages. So when you think about what that translates into for your monthly mortgage purchase, it can be a lot, it can be a lot of money. And so affordability could become an issue here as well in terms of that monthly payment. And will we see something similar in Jamaica where the developers, the builders are helping to make prices more affordable by offering discounts or rebates? Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. It's it's very unique so far. It's an interesting concept coming out of the U.S. So wait and see. I don't think we're getting a market crash in the U.S. Why? Because supply is limited. Still, there are not that many houses being built to create that crash. So we, we're not likely to see a big crash, as a lot of people are saying in the comments. Um, in Jamaica, we could ask, could we see a crash there? Probably not as well um, based on the same issue. The supply is building, but it's not at a stage yet where we may see a, a, a bubble, as they call it, which would, which is what would create the burst. So that's why I wanted to point that out. Interesting times in the US market. All right, Keisha, Keisha. so there's a question here from Sean that says, is the Fed considering another interest hike? Yeah, well, definitely what we're seeing in the Fed minutes and from a lot of the Fed speakers, they are what they call data driven. And the Fed is raising interest rates if they see inflation continuing to be a problem. The inflation numbers, um, the, the most recent ones, were not that much in terms of rate of increase, but the Fed is still on watch. They're watching. They're very cautious. They're waiting on the, the inflation data to come out to see if they will. They've even said it that another rate hike is very likely. It's just a matter of when it's going to come. So the answer is yes. We just don't know when. Is it going to be in this year, highly likely, or is it going to be early next year? But it's coming. No, Keisha, I was just saying that um, it's really rough in terms of housing. But... Yeah. Um, there, there are some workarounds. There are some persons who are very inflexible. They only want things that are new and pretty. But the ugly duckling principle also um, applies to housing mm -hmm. because there are possible opportunities in looking at 
um, locations, postal zones that are ignored. For example, Kingston 19 and 20 doesn't have valuations that are as high as Kingston 6 and Kingston 8. But someone Everything can get Julian. yard space. Like, you're still yeah. going to need a mortgage at the yeah, oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. So, but, still, I'm still, still very hard to afford it. No matter what, I could have Kingston 256. <laughs> still going to be um, an affordability issue just based unless you're going cash. So probably if you know have cash buyers, you can say, well, with the cash, you know, you're forego having to go secure the mortgage at the higher rates. Yeah, definitely. Um it's just a matter of of thinking outside the box, given the situation. Right. Yeah. Because I kind of I feel, I feel I feel bad for people my age because I just said boy. Well, like they call it a generation ruined, that a lot of people are gonna have to stay with mommy and daddy or uncle and auntie or somebody for a longer time. Yeah, definitely, without a doubt. Um, yeah. What I was thinking of too is there where appropriate. There might be persons who might know an architect. They might know somebody who knows how to build houses. And they might be able to buy a parcel of land and build. And that might work out better than trying mm -hmm. to hope that the market crashes, for argument's yeah. sake. Yeah, not so, crash. So those yeah, are no, we, definitely I know not. persons, especially internationally, who have been waiting for almost 20 years on a crash. From 08, they're, they're you know, saying, all right, the next one coming. And during that time, home prices have gone up significantly. So... There's no money made on the sidelines, I always tell people. So while you're watching, the, the money is being made. Right. And one feature of the financial crisis of 2008 is the fact that building inventory slowed down significantly. So a lot of home builders actually came out of the market. So the building that would have occurred in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, leading up to the mid-2000s, essentially slow down drastically after the crisis, which is feeding into what we're seeing in the U.S. market, where it, where it pertains to the shortage of supply. And it's a similar issue in Jamaica as it relates to the shortage of supply. For many years, interest rates were super high, especially coming out of the FinSAC era, and it wouldn't have been as feasible to build at scale as it would have been in prior periods. And we are still feeling the effects of that shortage in terms of building inventory so we're seeing inventory come out we're seeing the new developments all the depart all the apartments that are coming out but it's nowhere near the supply so we're seeing that catch-up effect but well, and you, you can't even dig deeper supply in what price brackets right because yeah i was about to say that as they say, yeah. I afford a million of what is it, 30 million fair house of a stony not anymore <laughs> or like 100 million fair yeah, house yeah, yeah. so not everyone can afford in those price brackets, which That's creates right. a Very deep much. affordability issue. Yeah. And um, we could see a bigger correction in certain segments. So, for instance, a luxury segment, um, we'll right. call luxury real estate. But yeah. more in middle markets, definitely not, because the supply and demand is closer together. Um, I would expect to see much more um, appreciation there. And also what's interesting is that inflation doesn't just affect the price of food, but it also affects the price of housing because if a dollar today is worth more than a dollar tomorrow, it means that the cost of everything will be going up, including housing, because building materials are no more expensive. So developers have to make their margin. So we have to factor in the effect that inflation will have on housing. So there's that as well.